this is Virtuosa Chess Noob learning and having fun with chess. I'm going to show you today a really brilliant trap in a gambit you should definitely be playing against a Scandinavian main line. So I have the white pieces, so e4 and now d5, the Scandinavian of course will take, captures, captures back, bring out knight to c3, attacking the queen, queen to a5 line, so the main line, and you might have seen it before, we now have the Leonhardt Gambit. Only occurs in about 3% of games, uh, and after queen takes, which is what they should do, we are, we are now in some really, really fun territory. So obviously white is up a point of material, but when you look at stockfish evaluation, we're only minus 0.1 which means we've got quite a positional advantage against black. Now the sort of main or standard line in the Leonhardt Gambit is rook b1 immediately uh, attacking the queen and also taking control of the b-file, but in this game we're going to show you how to play a absolutely devious queen trap line. It begins here with knight to b now as I said, rook b1 is the best move, Stockfish will try to say that that is an inaccurate move, but let's see what happens. Well, what's the idea here? Looks like we're attacking that pawn, attacking uh, the pawn on c7, which of course comes with an absolute fork of the king and rook, and so the most natural move for black, given that they moved their queen initially to a5, is they're going to move the queen back, and that's usually what happens. Now, just remember, the knight is defended by the bishop, we now play the second step of our devious trap, which is the bishop to c4, a seemingly slightly, uh, slightly slow move, it seems to make a bit of sense for the opponent, oh look, you know, bringing the bishop to a, uh, uh, to a sort of standard developing square, looks like the knight is stuck in the middle of nowhere, uh, but what we're really doing is targeting f7. Here uh, about 50% of the time black will say, hey that knight is in the middle of nowhere, let's attack it, and that's what my opponent did. So c6 and that is a blunder. And this is a blunder, it goes from about minus 1.4 to plus 1.3. And here we're already really happy because we now have the next stunning move, Bishop captures the pawn, brilliant move. And here it almost looks like a desperate move. Most players with the black pieces don't know what's up. Here the king cannot capture the bishop, they need to play king d8, but that's such a foreign move. So 90% of the time the king will capture the bishop, which is another blunder, a really bad blunder because with this blunder black loses their queen. How? We now have queen h5 with check. Notice the queen is potential, uh, well it is, on the same rank. And here black probably suddenly realises they've made a bad mistake. So here black only has three legal moves. The pawn to block the check, king here, king here. Three legal moves, king obviously can't go back because the queen controls the diagonal. However, if they play this move, it looks like we've got check, discovered attack, we win the queen. If they play this move, we've got a very similar thing. Check, discovered attack, we win the queen. And so it looks like if the opponent carefully looks at the position is, they're going to play this move, which is actually not even their best move. Their best move is in fact to play g6 and accept the loss of the queen, because in this position they still lose the queen in a few more steps. Here we get to bring another piece into the attack, bishop to b2 with check. My opponent finds the best move, which is blocking the check with the pawn, but now we simply just take another pawn. Check. And here my opponent decided to move the queen to this square, and now I've got knight 
to C7 with check and have a look here. If black moves any move other than capture with the queen, I have mate next turn. So mate with queen e8. My opponent had a long think, and as you can see, they had to trade the queen for the knight. I take, and at the end, well, at uh, move 12, let's take stock of what we've got. Black has had to trade their queen and a pawn for two minor pieces. So I've got three pawns, I've got two pawns. <clears throat> I've got their queen, they've got my bishop and a knight. The king is stuck in the middle of the board, uh, obviously lost the right to castle. None of their other pieces are developed. This is completely winning for me. The only thing they potentially have is that they've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five. So numerically, they've got an extra piece, but I've got the queen and I've got pieces developed skulking around their king. I'm completely winning here. It's, I think, plus, uh, plus 4.5, plus 5.5, I think. Uh, and it's a matter of here of not stuffing up and losing pieces. So my goal at this point is to try to not trade pieces per se, but try to um, use my queen to win material. And if I can capture a clean additional piece, then I'm completely winning, because then I can force trade pieces and win the end game. So they play the best move, um, you know, with an attack on the bishop. So I give a check, there we are. I now just develop, let's try develop. I now get my king out of there with short castles. They develop, that's fine. Let's set up a battery. So here, potentially, you know, at any point, there could be a mate. So, you know, obviously not right yet. They've still got the bishops. All those squares are defended. But, you know, setting up the possibility. They decide to capture. That's fine. Take back with check. Uh, here, looks like they're trying to move the king out of the way. But this rook is now pretty much stuck. It's not developed. That's not developed yet. So we're doing potentially okay. I bring my knight forward. So here we go. You know, potentially quite strong there. They develop a piece, that's fine. Here I decide to, you know, attack the rook. They move the rook. I now capture the pawn. They uh, try to defend that piece. But here, queen to b3, a potential discovered check. Um, they decide to block the potential discovered check. Also, cutting off the defense of my knight. That's a good move. I need to move my knight out of the way. They move their king out of that uh, out of that uh, that diagonal. So that knight is now no longer pinned. So let's attack that knight. They move back. I'm here. Give a check again. Queen, uh, the king has to come back. I move again. Here we go. Uh, that was a potential fork. And here I thought, do I take right away? No, I don't want to trade. You know, I don't want to lose material. Push forward. Here we are, and that comes as the check again. And here is where I don't see a mate in five. So this was a mistake. This was a mistake because they hang mate in five, and it's a brilliant mate that I didn't see. The move I had to see was knight to f7 with check again forcing the king back. And then I have rook captures that piece. And you think, well, don't they, can't they just take back? Let's see what happens if they take back. Let's say they take back with the bishop. Well, I now have double, a double check. Double check. King can either go here or here, but it doesn't matter. Whichever way they go, it is mate. So a brilliant sequence. So basically they cannot take that piece. So let's say they take with the rook, it's the same thing. Double check, um, the uh, king here is forced into this position and that is mate. So in this position, what they had to do is potentially, you know, uh, try to block, but you know, captures, they can take now and that's a discovered check and then check and that is mate. Everything is covered. So a really brilliant sequence there. However, <laughs> I didn't see it. So I moved my queen forward. Uh, and the lo logic here is that will now be mate. 
So they have to give a bit of room, so I can now take that bishop, that was my goal, try to win a clean piece, now I can trade pieces if I want. So now they have to block, that is of course now pinned to the king, so let's bring another piece, that will potentially be mate, they have to bring that across, that's fine, so now I can capture, they capture back, I capture here, they can't do anything, remember that is pinned, so that pawn is not defended, there we go, check, they have to block, take, and here black opts to resign, because the only way they can avoid mate is to block with the pawn, uh, with the rook, and then I will capture that next turn. So here they're completely lost, basically whittling down the material and the defences around the king. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is to try the Leonhardt Gambit against the Scandinavian, and maybe try the Queen Trap line. It's very, very fun. It can be a bit tricky and can backfire, but so satisfying when it's successful. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Thank you.